Hi, my name is Mushan. This is uh, this talk is recorded in front of the live audience. Woo! Yes, don't wake up the kids. Um, so I'm here to talk about empathy and data viz. And it's probably not going the direction that you usually expect, hopefully. So the title is uh, Data Viz, the Unempathetic Art. So it's rather the lack, the lack thereof of empathy in data visualization. If I look at the mass, I will never act. If I look at the one, I will. This is a very heartwarming statement from uh, Mother Teresa. There's also this one. One death is a tragedy, a million is a statistic. This is pretty much the same thing. Um, I'm going to talk about three, uh, three things, obviously, always three things. One, dark visualizations. Second is empathy. What is it good for? And I'm going to try to think with you guys if we can scale compassion. So in 2015, um, Matthew Lucas um, created these infographics for, for commemorating the 70th year uh, of the bomb. Um, and the first uh, poster on the left um, presents the events leading to the drop of the bomb, the center one, uh, the magnitude of death, and then the third one, the bomb development uh, sites uh, until they converge um, in the dropping. Um, I, think, I think we can think about these works as visually pleasing. And I came across them um, on Twitter when uh, Kate Crawford um, posted this uh, question. Um, should, we, should we aestheticize these images? And what followed was a long uh, conversation. At some point, um, somebody realized uh, it was a student and uh, a student's work, and then people started to say, oh, uh, on one hand, we shouldn't uh, aestheticize death. On the other hand, it's a student. It went on and on and on. Uh, but one uh, late comer to the conversation uh, made an interesting remark. So Alberto Cairo was saying, um, I'm just very skeptical to the idea that data visualization is a medium that can convey or even care about conveying or increase empathy. Um, we use data to help people do the right thing. How can you do it without empathy? So this kind of um, sent me on a path of uh, asking that question. So. Empathy, what is it good for? Well, Paul Bloom has a lot to say about it. Um, he was t telling people, I'm writing a book about empathy. And, and when people hear that he's uh, writing about a, a book about empathy, they're going like, oh, that's very nice. And, and then he says, yes, I'm against it. <laughs> and, and they're like, what? Uh, they're sure he's joking or something like that. But no, he, he actually um, has a lot of problem with the idea of empathy as a moral compass. So he says empathy acts like a spotlight, focusing one's attention on a single individual in the here and now. And, and indeed, um, the, in, in his argument against empathy, he's saying that empathy is biased towards those who look like us. Um, after 9-11, it, it, it served as, as the justification to the invasion of Iraq. In 2014, empathy with the three kidnapped and murdered Israeli boys served to legitimize the 2014 war in Gaza. Empathy and manipulation have always been used to prolong violence because we can empathize with, with a single person, not uh, with a mass. So empathy, uh, as far as Paul Bloom is involved, empathy is not a compass for ethics. E even if we don't empathize with, the, with distant strangers, their lives have the same value 
uh, as the lives of those we love. So if we use empathy, um, we won't be able to scale it. Um, when we look at the many, we often don't act. When we look at the one, we do. One. And the day after that, that photograph uh, appeared, donations w went from $8,000 to $430,000 because of the photograph. Uh, th this is from a study by Paul Slovic. And, uh, and we can see that um, a clear correlation between the, the photograph um, um, surfacing um, and, the, and the media coverage. So um, Paul Slovic uh, talks about this phenomena as, um, as statistical numbing. He says, the, w the world's problems are too large to be solved uh, one person at a time. And, and he actually goes and, and researches that. Um, in, in one of these uh, uh, researches, he, th they tried to compare statistical lives versus identifiable lives. Um, so, so they, they gave a couple of uh, examples, um, um, food, sh food shortage in uh, Malawi, um, 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 uh, drought in, uh, in Zambia, um, four million Angolas, uh, Angolans uh, forced to flee their homes, more than 11 million people in Ethiopia need immediate food, food assistance and so on. Uh, these big numbers are, are definitely things that, as, as humanity, we should act on. And we should be able to use statistics to, um, to inform that, uh, these decisions. Um, as far as identifiable lives, um, uh, they use this, the story of Rokia. Uh, Rokia, a seven-year-old girl from, Mal from Mali, Africa, is desperately poor and faces a threat of severe hunger or even starvation. Her life will be changed for the better as a result of your financial gift. So should we go with a bigger picture or should we go, like what, what would move us more? And when statistical lives uh, were described, um, the, the mean don donation was around a bit more than a million dollars in, in that research when the identifiable lives uh, were uh, presented as the story, the donations were more than double. So people are willing to give more than double the money to save one person than to save many people. But it gets even worse, because it was enough to just mention the statistics. It was enough to just mention um, the bigger picture to diminish the, the, willing the willingness to help. So even if you know about the, identifi uh, the identifiable lives, even if you've heard the story of Rokia, um, as soon as statistics uh, enters the, the, the frame, we get stati statistical, uh, statistical numbing and, and we're less e eager to, to help. And that's something that is really um, uh, detrimental to, to the efforts to, to present the big picture as the basis for, for making um, uh, policy on a grand scale, a policy that is informed by, 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 um, by, by humanistic um, perspective. Um, Psychic numbing begins when the number of victims increases from one to two. So it's enough to talk about two people to see, to, to see the audience less eager to, to do something. Um, so we're simply unable to think in scale. We notice minor changes from total darkness much, much better than changes in full light. So, so the, the, there's something uh, k kind of um, basic about uh, about the small changes from from one to two, that, or from zero to one, that is so much uh, more powerful for us 
than, than the big numbers. It's just like we, we didn't evolve to think in scale. Um, Simon Bar Baron Cohen, le leading psychologist and, and researchers, researcher on empathy, um, he, he wrote uh, The Science of Evil and, uh, and uh, Zero Degree of Empathy. Again, not to be uh, mistaken with his cousin, Sasha Baron Cohen, who is also very interested in empathy but in a, a different way. Um, he, he argues that uh, for, for a different perspective on empathy and, and kind of uh, looking at different types of empathy. And he talks about affective empathy, uh, which would be the emotional connection, being able to feel what they feel, and cognitive empathy, the, the rational uh, understanding, the ability to take someone's perspective. So one, w one side would be um, kind of the more emotional empathy, and the other one would be more, the more um, uh, rational empathy. Um, and he compares um, the like with autism, there's, there's no problem with emotional connection or affective empathy. The problem is to understand the framework of, of, of the other person. And he, com he compares, by, by uh, contrast, psychopaths who don't have the emotional connection while they do understand the framework of, um, of rationally understand the, um, the emotions of the other person, sometimes even uh, taking advantage of, of that understanding. Um, th this kind of uh, connects to, the, to this idea of two systems of co cognitive uh, processing, or two, two ways of thinking um, that have been um, communicated uh, very well by Daniel Kahneman in his uh, book, uh, Thinking Fast and Slow. Um, so system one, the fast system, operates uh, automatically and quickly with little or no effort and, se and sense of voluntary control. So we don't decide to think fast. The, the, the first decision, the first thoughts that, uh, that come to mind are not something that we choose to think. Um, they just uh, c come fast and, and, and easy, but, to, but there's not a lot of control over them. Uh, system two, the slow system, allocates attention to the effortful mental activities that demand it, inclu including complex computation. Uh, the operation of system two are often associated with the, su the sub subjective experiences of agency, choice, and concentra concentration. So, so this is the, the more deliberate uh, thought process. But the way they work is that system one, because it's faster, because it, be, because it comes first, it informs sy system two. And what system two does uh, too often is not uh, criticize system one, criticize the kind of in instinctual uh, thoughts that we don't uh, um, um, analyze much, but contextualize it. So so it gets the information from system one, system one, and then um, rationalize what what. Uh, uh, how system one communicated uh, these uh, first impl impulses. And in, in visualization, we talk a lot about pre-attentive attributes. Pre-attentive attributes are the things that, that, that um, we use uh, to, to visualize um, uh, things to system one. Um, the, this is the way we use vision to uh, communicate between system one and system two. So the 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 different types of um, um, of um, pre-attentive attributes, uh, visual pre-attentive attributes. But could we maybe think of empathy as as yet another pre-attentive attribute? Um, because because we don't get to control it or rationalize it uh, much, but it does inform a lot of of our uh, of of what we see as more deliberate. Uh, um, decisions. So can we design a way to, to consider empathy as a pre-attentive attribute and, and wisely have it inform um, our more deliberate decisions? Um, and w would we be able to inform a more analytic uh, understanding of rational compassion? 
So let's try to think about scaling compassion. So as you can see here in this um, visualization by Periscopic, um, they visualized gun deaths. Um, and they start with system one, the, mo the more emotional um, system, um, with, with the story of the one uh, life arc uh, being cut in the middle. And, um, and, and we can see it starts, and then it, it breaks, the arc uh, is cut in the middle. And, and, and that idea of the arc that could have made it to 93, but didn't, is, is a very powerful um, way of starting with the one, right? The, the, this is, like, we can't stop by feeling empathetic to, th through that uh, framing. But then we don't stop there. It continues and, and, and adds up. And, and I think you'd agree with me that it's a pretty, pretty powerful visualization. Because um, th there's nothing worse than your arc being cut. Um, the, the empathetic framing has been established. But then they, they don't stop there. They continue to, to the more rational uh, cutting and dicing. Um, Kim Rees, who, who, uh, who, who was uh, the founder of uh, per Periscopic, says it's about the stolen lives. Uh, based on statistics, this person would have died of old age, have, have, gra have grandkids, own a house, create empathy. It's a way to create empathy for the life that was lost. Th this is data that actually is speculative. It's not data. It's not uh, based in reality, it's based on, on, on what reality could have been. Um, at the same time, th this visualization also allows for the aggregated view uh, for, for, uh, and for a dispassionate uh, analysis. And I think there's something there. Um, th this is another, another uh, visualization by Slate. Uh, Slate magazine visualized the, the exact exact same data set. So I think it, like th this is on one hand overwhelming but and, and, and tragic, but I don't think empathy is involved. I don't, I, I, don't, I don't think that we get to empathize with any of these um, um, pe people who, who, who were killed by guns. Um, let's talk about the, this aspect of sto stolen years, this, this speculative statistics. Uh, finally, the reality we want is a missing data set. Like, we don't have the data for, for the years that they, uh, that the, the exact years that were stolen. As much as this number is precise, it's, it is a speculation. But maybe speculation is something we need in data visualization. Data analysis and data visualization leaves it uh, misrepresented by design. Uh, but how can we change the reality that generated this data? Um, in, a, in an article, uh, responding to my article on, on the subject, uh, Steve Lambert uh, um, had issues with, uh, with that specific vis visualization. He, he was arguing that uh, when we move people, we must offer a productive outlet for that motivation. He was arguing that, that the visualiza visualization was indeed very, uh, very powerful, but it didn't let, uh, it didn't say, what do, what do I do, need to do now? It didn't give a link to, to donate or to call your congressperson or whatever. So he's, he's actually arguing that 
um, we were we were moved but not mobilized, um, and 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 that can actually be dangerous because we might be left with the analysis as enforcing the status quo rather than challenging it. As much as it's powerful, the, this powerful image of of the tragedy of a gun death death in in America becomes something that you just can't do much about. That's how the visualization might m might be um, interpreted. So to conclude, empathy is a spotlight as, as system one. Statistical numbing is what we get with system, with system two. Pre-attentive uh, system one might be able to frame uh, system two. Empathy, we, sa we som sometimes say empathy, um, Paul Bloom would, would argue we, we should talk about compassion too many times when we're talking about, about empathy, we're actually talking about emotional manipulation. So we need to really understand what, what do we mean when, when we say empathy. Our data hides the desired reality. Like maybe there is room for more speculative data, for, for more um, um, inferences on a path that could have been different. And finally, raising awareness is not enough. It's not enough to just say something is wrong with the world. Um, we should use that opportunity where, if we if we did, you know, if we built our message well, we also direct it in the path of change. So thank you very much. I'll take questions now. <laughs>